Hello everyone, I'm Teresa Schnettler, I'm actually finishing my master's in psychology and hope you enjoy this interesting piece of research I want to present in this video. Imagine the world where robots are in schools, would they replace human teachers? How could they positively influence learning and teaching? Sounds interesting? So keep watching! Natalia reich and Friederike Eisel conducted an online study at the University of Bielefeld. In the paper they explain how educational robots are perceived and how these attitudes towards robots could be predicted and they asked the people in which role robots should enter schools in Germany. So let's get started. Nowadays, everyone is used to new technologies in classrooms or universities, like laptops, smartboards, etc. Students and educators face the challenge of incorporating the most recent technological devices into learning and teaching. Incorporating robots would be a great challenge as well. In some countries, like Korea or Japan, robots already support children and university students in science classes. How about the German people? Would they accept educational robots to support their learning? Former research found out how robots in Germany are perceived in general. The Eurobarometer study in 2012 indicates that German people have positive attitudes towards robots. As preferred areas of work, they mentioned manufacturing, space exploration, military and rescue but education was not among them. By now, most of the research about educational robots is done in East Asia. Societies over there seem to be enthusiastic and open to new technologies, so let's have a close look on German people. Natalia reich and Friederike Eisel conducted an online study with 345 participants aged between 16 and 60 years the majority of them were students at university with different majors, from physics to arts. First, participants read a brief description of the functions and features of educational robots, so everyone had the same knowledge and ideas about it. Afterwards, all participants were asked to which extent they hold negative attitudes towards educational robots. They also answered questions about robot anxiety and contact intention, like I would like to learn together with an education robot. Finally, everyone was asked to name the preferred domains and roles educational robots should have, for example the role of a teacher or the role of a tutor. The two German researchers report many interesting findings. Generally speaking, German people had mutual attitudes toward educational robots and a moderate robot anxiety. So far it seems relaxed, but when it comes to getting in contact with robots, people report to be reserved. The self-reported values derived negatively from the mean, which indicated participants were rather unwilling to interact and learn with robots in the future. To further investigate these results, reich and Eisel tried to find out which personal characteristics are important to explain these attitudes, feelings and behaviors. Altogether, attitudes and contact intentions of people depend on the gender, age and education. It is also worth considering need for cognition and the affinity with technology called technology commitment. The more people feel attracted by technology, the more they like robots. Many practical implications derive from the last research question. By asking participants about their preferred learning situations, they found out that education robots are best suited to single or small group learning situations. In these contexts, robots should inherit the role of a teaching assistant or a tutor, not the teacher itself. Talking about the fields of application, students agree to apply educational robots in STEM-related fields like math and physics, but not to social or artistic domains. Interestingly, robots seem to be suited to teach foreign languages, but not German. So, what do you think about this paper? For me, it provides fruitful insights into a field less investigated by now and can be helpful to implement educational robots aligned with the expectations of potential end-users. 
Of course, some limitations of this research have to be mentioned, like the written description of robots or the sample which is mainly restricted to university students and therefore is maybe a little too homogeneous. From a more general perspective, it is important to provide further empirical evidence on how aspects like culture, robot type and individual characteristics influence attitudes towards robots. As you can see, there are so many open research questions, so just go out and do your own research and find something interesting. Thanks for watching and if you like, subscribe.